Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories. We are tracking for you on Friday, the 30th of August. World marvels at India's fintech diversity, says PM Modi. Afghan women sing in protest against strict Taliban laws. And more than 1,000 killed in anti quota protest in Bangladesh reveals the ministry. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday termed India's fintech revolution as the key driver in improving financial inclusion as well as driving innovation as he highlighted that over the last 10 years, the country's fintech industry has received investments of more than 31 million US dollars and startups in the industry has recorded growth over 500%. PM Modi, who was addressing the Global Fintech Fest, said that the economy and the markets of the nation are in a celebratory mood at a time when the nation is also going through a festive period. He hailed India's fintech innovation and said now not only the cultural diversity of the country amazes the foreign guest, but now they are amazed by India's fintech diversity as well. The Prime Minister underlined that the trinity of Janadhan, Adhar and Mobile have broken down the mentality of Cassius King and made way for approximately half of the digital transactions in the world taking place in India. India's UPI has become a major example of fintech in the world, the Prime Minister said, adding that it has enabled 24-7 banking services in every village and city in all weather conditions. Later, PM Modi also inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of various development projects in Palgar. He also laid the foundation stone of Vadwan Port, a maritime getaway that aims to boost the country's trade and economic growth by catering to large container vessels and cargo ships. Once operational, it will be one of the India's largest deep water ports and will provide direct connectivity to international shipping routes, reducing transit times and cost. Pakistan's Foreign Office on Thursday said it has extended invitation to all heads of members' nation of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, including India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, for the grouping's meeting scheduled in October in Islamabad. This comes days after Defence Minister Khwaja Asif has said Pakistan would certainly invite PM Modi to the regional summit. However, India has not yet confirmed the participation. While Pakistan hosts the rotating chairmanship of the bloc and will conduct the summit in physical mode, India during its chairmanship in 2023 held the summit virtually with Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif in attendance. However, the then Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto had joined the summit's Foreign Minister's meet in India's Goa state. The Indian Prime Minister had last visited Pakistan in 2015 when he made a stop over in Lahore and held meeting with the then Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. However, bilateral relations have been frozen since India ended the special status of Jammu and Kashmir in 2019 and split it into two federally administered territories. Despite calls by Pakistani leaders, India has maintained talks can only take place if terrorism issue is at the centre of the conversation. Reiterating the stance, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Friday said the era of uninterrupted dialogue with Pakistan is over. He said actions have consequences and whether events take a positive or a negative direction, India will react accordingly. I think the era of uninterrupted dialogue with Pakistan is over. Actions have consequences. And in so far as Jammu and Kashmir is, is concerned, I think 370 is done. So the issue today is what kind of relationship can we possibly contemplate uh, with Pakistan? What I do want to say is we are not passive and whether events take a positive or a negative direction, 
either way we will react to it and afghan women activists inside and outside the country have published videos of themselves on social media singing revolutionary songs against the strict laws of the taliban regime the taliban last week formally codified a long set of rules governing morality ranging from requiring women to cover their faces and men to grow beards to banning car drivers from playing music the taliban rules require women to wear attire that fully covers their bodies and faces as well as instructing drivers of vehicles not to transport women without a male guardian zadi to amr soni mohr khamushi dahanam ra mohayya mekuni to amr soni ab nanam ra خب در طول این مدت که سی سال طالب آمده به افغانستان و حاکم شدین برنامه های زیادی برای حسب زنان داشتین از شروع او از شروع مقاطب که برای خانم ها مقاطب بسته کردن و همچنان هم تو دانشگاه ها و با مرور زمان کار از پیشان گرفتن اکنون فشار هایی که جهان بر سر اینا میاره و یا رسمیت به اینا نمیده یا تعامل با اینا نمیکنه اینها همه فشارها را بر سر زنان میارند میتونن از این برنامه ها و از این فشارها با استفاده از زن ها این برنامه ها را کاملا تطبیق بکنن در کشور و سودش از جهان بگیرن Since seizing control in 2021 the Taliban's restrictions on women and freedom of expression have drawn sharp global criticism The Taliban say they respect women's rights in accordance with their interpretation of the Islamic law and local customs and that they are internal matters that should be addressed locally. Moving on, more than 1000 people were reportedly killed in the violence that erupted in Bangladesh during the anti-quota protest which also led to the ouster of former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, the health ministry informed on Thursday. An interim government led by Nobel Prize winning economist Muhammad Yunus replaced Hasina's administration quelling the violence that had flared for weeks before her departure as security forces cracked down on protest and continued for some days after she fled to India Hasina had ruled the South Asian nation of 200 million people for the past 15 years marked by arrest of opposition leaders crackdowns on free speech and suppression of dissent She resigned this month in the face of deadly student-led protests that killed hundreds. The bond of island nation Maldives slumped as after Fitch downgraded long-term foreign currency issuer default, rating Maldives to CC from CCC plus for the second time in two months over a deepening financial crisis. The tourist paradise bond fell to 71 cents on the dollar on Thursday as the rating agency flagged intensified pressures over its plummeting currency reserves. The bond traded at more than 80 cents at the start of August. The majority of the Maldivian government's 3.4 billion dollars external debt is held by the export import banks of China and India. making the country's mounting debt crisis a showcase for rivalry between the two Asian powers. The IMF had warned in May that without significant policy changes, the country will face a high risk of debt stress. And a Nepali lawmaker from the CP and UML led by Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli has demanded amendment in the constitution to make Nepal a Hindu state. Lawmaker Kiran Kumar Shah made the demand while addressing the parliament on Thursday a rare instance when a lawmaker from the communist party has demanded for a Hindu state he claimed that the secularism adopted by the newly promulgated constitution has failed to give Nepal a respectful position in the world arena Nepali yuvahari parivar ko pet palna videsh ma bechna badhya bhayeka chan कॉलेज रेत्ते उद्योग बंद हो खेत बाजिद शटर बंद हो गांव घर वृद्ध आश्रम बंद हम सामू प्रश्न खड़ा भाई हमी सोचे थे कि संविधान नेपाली संविधान सभा मार्फत आप सब नेता इस विश्व को उत्कृष्ट संविधान बने तर आज यह संविधान न तो उन्नति नहीं दी रहे न तो देश को पहचान तेल संविधान में संशोधन करी ने सनातन हिंदू राष्ट्र ने पहचान दूँ धन्यवाद Right wing Rashtriya Prajatantra Party has been advocating and lobbying for the reinstatement of Hindu state as well as the constitutional monarchy 
While a faction within the Nepali Congress, the largest party in Nepal's parliament has also been raising demand to make the Himalayan nation a Hindu state. Hours after Nepal's President Ramchandra Podale authenticated the transitional justice law on Thursday, 10 Western governments have welcomed the legislation. In a joint statement, the US, UK, Switzerland, Australia, Norway, Japan, Finland, EU, Germany and France welcomed the investigation of disappeared persons, Truth and Reconciliation Commission Act 2071 and said they will explore possible mechanisms for support to the Nepal government for the benefit of the victims. However, the statement said since the process is in early stages, in order to assess possible future actions, the Western powers look forward to hearing from the Nepal government about specific needs to support effective delivery by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the Commission on the Investigation of Enforced Disappearance Persons. The transitional justice law was one of the major demands in the Himalayan nation to help advance justice, accountability and redress for the widespread human rights violations and abuses committed during the 1996-2006 conflict, in which at least 13,000 people were killed and 1,300 went missing. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.